I'm meteorologist Ryan Henrahan. We've got a severe weather threat developing across the northeastern United States from New England down through the mid-Atlantic on Saturday. So in this video, I'm going to take a look at some of the computer models we're looking at, some of the data that's just coming in, and talk about the threat that exists and why we're looking at the threat for severe thunderstorms, including tornadoes. If you like this video or you like some of the other ones we've done, please subscribe, like, comment. Uh, I can, we can help us uh, grow a conversation, dialogue between me and you so you have a better idea of what we're thinking, what we're looking at, um, and ideally something that can give you some actionable information to keep you safe and keep you prepared for the weather. So let's take a look at the weather maps and we're going to do a deep dive into this system because it is a little bit interesting. Uh, I'm going to start off with this. This is the water vapor loop and the area that we're interested in is actually back here across portions of North Dakota and South Dakota. There's this little disturbance of the jet stream that's flying to the south and to the east and by this time tomorrow by uh, Saturday afternoon it's going to be across western New York and western Pennsylvania and that is effectively going to strengthen a system that's moving in and allow it to produce some more interesting kind of weather event for us and we can see that with a cold front that'll be moving in right now there's not a whole lot let's take a look at what's going on here um, on the radar loop and there's some showers maybe a couple thunderstorms across portions of of, uh, Canada. Um, there is a threat for some severe weather across the Great Lakes today, but at least as of uh, midday Friday, there's not a whole lot going on. This is going to change in a big way, though, as that system dives down from the Dakotas and this whole system sort of sharpens and strengthens a little bit, uh, things turn more interesting on Saturday. So let's go to some of our computer models now. I'm going to show you these are high risk computer models. They're called CAMs, which means a, collect a convective allowing model, and those help. Uh, actually resolve thunderstorms uh, that will develop. And so now we're in the window within 24 hours and we look at these high resolution models. This is the NAM. Um, and I should say that these models are in pretty good agreement now. I'm not showing the crazy outlier that's showing a wild scenario. All of our high resolution models pretty much show the same thing. So there's pretty good agreement now. So here's what's going on. Uh, this is a look at wind speed um, and wind direction. We've got these streamlines. So you can see uh, by, let's go to Saturday morning. The wind is coming in off the south, bringing in warm and more humid air across southern New England. And then watch what happens by midday. This is two o'clock in the afternoon. There's a pretty good front that sets up across central Pennsylvania, upstate New York, and northern New England. The wind is coming down from the north. If you look closely, you can see these streamlines, these little arrows showing a northerly wind. But the wind here across southern New England and down toward Philadelphia and New York City is out of the south. And so that's a front, it's a band of convergence that sets up and that convergence will help trigger these showers and thunderstorms as they move in from the northwest. So it's a cold front, there's strong convergence along the front and that's what we're looking for when we're forecasting uh, the threat for severe weather. It is gonna get more humid tomorrow. In fact, the humidity levels have actually been increasing in these forecasts. So the more humid it gets, the higher the dew point, the greater the instability and the greater severe weather threat there is. So at least for the day on Friday, this a little humid, but it's not too bad. The humidity increases Friday night, Saturday morning, and then by Saturday afternoon, it's quite humid. We've got dew point temperatures in the 70s from Philadelphia, New Jersey, New York City, Connecticut, Rhode Island, uh, southern New Hampshire as well. So that's some really humid air. And you can see there's a sharp gradient between the really humid air over southern New England and some dry air to the north of the Adirondacks and back into portions of New York and Pennsylvania. So you can clearly see where the front is. That's where that convergence is. That's where the air is going to come together in the low levels of the atmosphere and that is what is going to give us those storms uh, to fire up so we look for a couple of things when we're forecasting thunderstorms one you need that trigger so we've got in this case we've got a cold run moving in and that low level convergence will help um, fire up some storms but before you get the storm you need some instability the atmosphere has to be unstable otherwise you won't get any thunderstorms even with a cold front so let's look at that instability this is called cape convective available potential energy we use a lot of acronyms in the weather world and this is just another one but the higher the cape number the more unstable the atmosphere and the faster you can get acceleration in a thunderstorm um, and i'm going to bring this here to saturday morning not a lot of instability uh, to start the day no surprise normally in the morning when it's cool you don't have a lot of instability but watch what happens by afternoon. You've got a lot of thunderstorm fuel from Washington, D.C. and Baltimore up through Philly, over toward New York, the Hudson Valley, Connecticut, Massachusetts. The atmosphere is very ripe, very unstable. And that's why we expect these thunderstorms to form. But you need one more thing to get severe weather, and that is wind shear. Wind shear effectively allows storms to organize 
And the more they organize, the higher the shear, the higher the instability, the stronger they can be. And you can get super self thunder storms or storms that start to rotate if you've got the right balance between cape and shear. And I want to show you that shear here. Let's go to Saturday afternoon. Uh, notice this red shading. That's about 40 to the white shading is about 50 knots of shear between zero and six kilometers above our head. So, you know couple miles up, right? Um, and that's a lot. <laughs> I mean, we look at a threshold about 30 knots is the threshold you need for severe weather. 35 knots is better. 40 knots is pretty good. 40 to 50 knots is really good. Um, and so that tells me that we're going to have storms organized and some of those storms are, are going to be severe. Um, and we want to look at low level shear. So that was deep layer shear. That's going to organize a whole complex of storms. But the low level shear in the lowest two or three kilometers of the air, that's what can give you a rotating storm or some low level rotation or a tornado potential. We've got it tomorrow. I'm gonna advance the clock here to 2 p.m. and we're looking at about two to 300 um, units of helicity. Uh, the units are meter squared per second squared, but uh, we're just going to say units uh, for the uh, the purposes of this uh, YouTube discussion. Um, and so, yeah, that's a, that's a lot of low-level shear. That's good for us. That's a lot. And so that tells me that we do have a tornado potential uh, tomorrow. Best chance is going to be areas uh, just inland from the coast. Um, and we can look at what the computer models are doing. They are developing these storms here. This is updraft helicity. So this is showing us, it's, the models are trying to forecast exactly where these storms, these rotating storms are going to develop. And this computer model, the NAM, uh, has a lot of them across portions of the Lehigh Valley, northern New Jersey, portions of the Hudson Valley into southern New England as well. But we can look at you know, a more different computer models to show us, you know, that's just one model. Other models show different areas with a different threat. And I'll give you sort of the, the blended version in just a second. A couple more tools that we use just to pinpoint areas where severe weather is likely. This is one of my favorite tools. This is from the short range ensemble forecast. Um, and this looks at where you've got that over overlap of cape and shear and low level shear. Um, and you can see the area highlighted northwestern Connecticut, the Berkshires and the capital region of the Taconics in New York. And then it sort of gets a little lower the farther south and the farther north you get. That's a pretty good bullseye. Um, so that, that right there, this is one of the products I look at all the time when forecasting severe weather. So that sort of gives you the alarm bell that, hey, uh, we've got something brewing here. Um, and then this is, I showed you that map before that had where the thunderstorms, the low level thunder thunderstorms, the let me back up here. Where the thunderstorms were showing that low-level rotation, uh, the NAM model had them mainly here, but there are other models that have that rotation as far north as central Maine, um, down through uh, southern New Hampshire, into Massachusetts, into western Connecticut as well. So this is the area that I think is probably most at risk, Hudson Valley up through western and central Massachusetts for severe weather and tornadoes. So these were sort of a a plan view um, showing you maps, but I want to show you um, an individual, what we call sounding. Um, this tries to basically mimic what a weather balloon launch would show you um, out in the future. So we can't launch a weather balloon now 24 hours from now, but we can have a computer model take a look at what the atmosphere is going to look like. So there's a lot of lines here, uh, there's a lot of arrows, it's a little confusing, but let me walk you through it here because this also it shows me the tornado potential. I just picked one area here. This is uh, somewhere around Hartford, Waterbury, Connecticut. Um, shows a couple things. One, uh, the area between the red and the blue, that is where you've got instability. So you've got a lot of instability here. Um, not a ton, you know, 1,000 to 2,000 uh, joules per kilogram. That's enough uh, for severe weather, but you also have quite a bit of shear. 50 knots of uh, deep layer shear from the ground up to the mid levels, and you also have a lot of low level wind shear. In fact, the zero to one kilometer uh, helicity here is nearly 300 units. That's a lot for us. I, and that definitely tells you tornado potential here. And if we can look at this, the hodograph, and I'm not going to explain this in too, too much detail, but basically what a hodograph is showing you is um, how the wind vectors change with height. And the more curved they are, the more clockwise curvature you've got, the better the tornado potential. And so that shows me that there's a lot of streamwise, uh, crosswise vorticity, um, and that can help give you that tornado potential. And then just another one here, this is just a couple hours later. This is five o'clock on Saturday, same deal. Uh, the thunderstorms are moving through, quite a bit of deep layer shear and low level shear. 
um, sort of a uh, definitely a bit of a concerning look here. So at least for right now, uh, the Storm Prediction Center has um, areas from Maine down into North Carolina, the I-95 corridor in uh, this uh, chance for uh, thunderstorms. It's a low risk right now. They're going to have to update this, though. They're going to have to increase these, and I think we'll see a hot, much higher probability with future updates. So based on what I'm looking at now, uh, pretty good odds of getting a bump up, maybe another, another one or two categories with a severe weather threat. And finally, just quickly want to show you one of these. These are uh, some of our uh, machine learning computer models, basically taking how the computer models look and using machine learning to come up with where the severe weather is most likely. And this is what we're looking at day two here. And you can see it pretty much matches what the Storm Prediction Center has. Although this model has a bullseye a little farther to the south. Um, other models, you know, just looking at the wind shear and the instability uh, would argue for something a little bit farther to the north. So a lot going on here, um, but bottom line is each computer model run we've seen over the last couple of days has turned more and more impressive, and that's why we do think that we've got this tornado potential, severe weather threat, hail, wind, severe weather, uh, mainly Saturday afternoon into early evening. Uh, lots of areas at risk for this up the I-95 quarter, but I think the, the focus where we could see a tornado developing, uh, best chance for that is going to be across the Hudson Valley, western Connecticut, western and central Massachusetts, parts of eastern New York, um, and then up into southern New Hampshire uh, as well. So that's sort of the core uh, of the severe weather threat. We're going to keep you updated, um, have another update for you uh, Saturday morning. Uh, but stay weather aware tomorrow. Um, you know, no need to panic, no need to worry at this point. But just keep an eye uh, for any warnings that may be issued. And, of course, we'll be here to keep you posted. Thank you so much for watching. Again, don't forget to subscribe, drop some comments, ask some questions. Happy to help you out here over the next couple of days.